Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. A Wolf's Silent Heart Episode 4 Brad, they arrived in Olympia, both he and Eddie not overly happy with either of the current situations for that matter. He had a mate he could not send and a son to that woman, and they were actively running away from him, or from Alpha Timothy, at this point, that man had threatened to separate her from her son and she'd bolted clear across to the other side of the Pacific Ocean. Eddie, stupidly enough, lay claim to a human girl, who had no idea he was her mate and had also run off, away from him, clear across the Pacific Ocean to be with her employer. Who was his runaway mate, so technically her Luna, if Bradley could sort this mess out that was, and he was determined to do so. Had a goddess gifted mate out there, was going to claim her the minute he could, Bartley also knew it was also what Benson wanted. They both wanted their mate, it was annoyingly frustrating that the moon goddess herself would do this to them allow them to have a mate they couldn't send and then allow her to send him out and cause her great pain, why he had no idea. It was cruel, is what it was. Though when they had tracked LZZY's credit card and seen that she had bought a plane ticket to Sydney to follow Piper, it made Bradley wonder about their bond yet again, not for the first time, just how connected those two were. Perhaps the moon goddess had seen fit to draw them together. They both had man issues of the same nature. No trust, been hurt through no fault of their own and run away from that pain. The four of them walked into Wolf Airlines, the she-wolf manning the front desk, smiled right at him and his men Alpha Bradley, please go right into the lounge. She'd waved them though a heavy set of double doors, and they'd pushed into the private lounge that Wesley and Terence owned stood on a loft platform that overlooked the lounge itself. It was a large room with a dozen dark wood tables and comfortable white leather chairs six to a table, the carpet was black and the bar where he could see both West and Terence leaning chatting away, was manned by a male wolf, dressed in pack colors, the bar was large at least 16 feet long and had bar stools all along the counter, he could see fully stocked with every kind of alcohol you could think of. As they walked down the stairs into the actual lounge, there was a massive multi-tiered, modern chandelier with circular crystal hanging tiers that all fell at odd angles. And spaced out around the room were minimalist-style circular two-tiered chandeliers that linked in with the one hanging by the stairs, seemed more like his father's style than West's, likely though this business was all West, his father had put his architecture skills into the building and designed something very opulent for his son. Might have that man design Piper's new store in Helena when he got her back. The far end of the room had large windows that overlooked his actual airport hangars, where his planes were all standing at gates. Bradley could see West's white jet out there on the tarmac waiting for them. Thank the goddess! He had an alliance with this man that Jet was going to be his lifesaver, he imagined. Watched as both West and Terence turned and watched them come down the stairs, leaned away from the bar and extended a hand to him as he approached them. He even offered him and his men all a drink. After the meet and greet was done. Bradley accepted the drink, he could actually use one. His whole life was in turmoil right now. Took a sip of the 20-year-old single malt scotch whiskey and sighed, trust West to stock the best. Not that the man ever really drank much, never seen him drink more than a single glass of anything ever, usually sat and swirled his drink but rarely actually drank it. He'd never asked why, not that curious he guessed. Asked how the two of them were doing, Terence all smiles, his triplets do within the month. West had a pup on the way to now, but not due for a few months either, told him it was going to be a boy. Was happy about that. His new little brothers, twin boys, arrived a few weeks ago and he was glad to have brothers, no more sisters, chuckled about it. Bradley was a little curious about Terence being here, with his mate Ella, 
due within the month, didn't seem concerned that his mate would go into early labor and he'd miss their birth. He was currently two hours from his pack and Bradley didn't think that if his mate was that close to having his pup he'd want to be anywhere but near her just in case she delivered early. Terence was way too laid back, though that was who he was, nothing ever seemed to bother that man, not even now as an actual alpha, he was still happy to lean back in his chair and chat as though life was easy. They all went and sat down at a table and West sent his bartender off to get food. Apparently, this lounge had a fully staffed kitchen out the back. He'd not shown them a menu but had ordered steaks for all of them plus two large share plates of entrees for while they waited for the main meals. Both plates stretched from one side of the table to the other, clearly catered to wolves' appetites. They chatted about pack life. West and Terence were polite enough not to bring up how he had no idea about having a son out there and currently halfway around the world. With a she-wolf that passed herself off as human all the time. This was not the first time it would have happened in the wolfen world, and it was unlikely going to be the last time that an alpha, had no idea about a child out there. Alphas slept around a lot and there was always that possibility. Mates left for all manner of reasons as well. Even West's own mate, Joanne, had left him ten years ago, then she'd come back to pledge loyalty and left again, only to have West hunt her down and drag her back. Now they were happy and mated once more. A pup on the way, the man did look happy. Life just didn't always go to plan, some wolves were just not lucky enough to get what they wanted right away or at all, or had to fight tooth and nail to get what they wanted. Unlike Harry his Delta, who just smiled at his girlfriend Betsy the day she had walked into the pack house, the first full moon after her 18th birthday, she'd smiled right at him and stated mine. Come here and bite me with a half giggle and Harry had done just that, he'd been 18 himself. Just a few months older than she was. That lucky bastard had been with his mate since they were both fifteen, and then was granted her as his goddess-gifted mate when she was eighteen. They'd only ever been with each other, never had eyes for anyone else, not even as teenagers without wolves. It seemed both West and Terence had looked up his piper and they were very impressed with the woman. Not only was she worth a small fortune, she was well-known, well-liked, and respected within the human world. West was curious as to how Bradley was going to pull her in from the human life she had created for herself. Noted himself, she had separated herself from the wolfen world, and appeared to be human in more ways than one. Commented that Joanne was difficult, being on her own for so long out in the human world, she didn't really like taking orders was used to doing her own thing and often just raised an eyebrow at him and stated not going to happen and would walk off. Played by her own rules. Bradley sighed and shook his head. He had no idea himself, gently so, and likely humanly publicly so. Cooper had laughed, a big lavish human wedding with lots of human photographers and whatnot, was my suggestion. West and Terence thought that it was likely a good idea. Couldn't just have a designer of her caliber disappear would likely set off a human world search. Bradley agreed, the wedding would also have to encompass both human and wolfen guests, due to who she was, that was going to be a logistical nightmare. But he was kind of hoping that with Piper in the industry already she would be able to handle that end, if not, he was certain with Isabel's background, she would be able to. Came from a wealthy human family and from what he'd heard, her sister's wedding had been massive. So likely something LZZY was used to handling. Tia arrived with Thomas in tow, her mate, both Eddie and Harry's parents, and he watched her eyes land right on her son, Eddie, and then stalked right towards him. She was a tall, well-trained woman, an elite warrior within his pack, for that matter, Thomas trailed her casually. She was very hot-headed and had already torn str, ps of him over the phone, and didn't look like she was even close to being calmed down. 
saw Eddie stand up with a heavy sigh and mutter here we go under his breath. Bradley gestured for both West and Terence to stay seated. They had both noted the anger rolling off the woman stalking across the room and their wolves naturally reacted to it she's Eddie's mother he'd told them. Tia came to a halt right in front of her son and stood staring up at him. She herself was six feet two, only two inches shorter than her son, glared right at the man, then shocked everyone when her open hand struck his face, in a loud resounding slap to his face, grated out angrily at him are you so impatient? Did I teach you nothing about humans? Bradley watched Timber surfaced at the attack on his human, and snarl right at her, only to have them put her hand right in his face, and point a finger at him I'm not afraid of you, back off Timber she snarled right back at his wolf. Saw Timber back off after a moment, left Eddie glaring at her his jaw tight, she was an elite class warrior and could take him and his wolf on, if she wanted to would be a good match for him in a fight. Likely wouldn't win but do a fair bit of damage to him. Human Edward, she is human, and you lay claim to her. Made her from what I understand, for the love of the goddess, you stupid fool, what if you can't get her back? I'm going to, Eddie stated flatly. Oh and you think just because you're handsome like your father here, she'll just fall at your feet. Eddie did actually look like his father, he had blonde hair and hazel green eyes, whereas Harry looked more like Tia, with brown hair and hazel blue eyes. No, Eddie admitted. You're right on that. Ask your father what it took to get me to come around, tried to use that stupid gamma charm on me all the time, pissed me off to the point I beat him several times. Saw Thomas smiled and nod. Didn't even deny it Bradley knew that Thomas was very proud of who his mate had been, so strong and unbreakable even for him, loved that she could just stare him down and take no crap. It was Thomas that stopped the closed fist of his mate as she tried to punch her son. It appeared she was spoiling for a fight. Wanted a piece of her own son for maybe screwing up his mate bond to a human girl. Tia calm down. Bradley finally stood up and interjected himself into the situation, it was getting out of hand, we do actually know where she is. Used her credit card and went to Australia. I will bring her back, I will talk to her myself. Oh, and you think she is going to listen to you? After your harassment, in an effort to get to Piper. She snapped at him. Benson bristled inside of him and surfaced himself to show his disapproval of her lack of respect for her alpha, growled right at her, low and menacingly. Watched her bow her head slightly as she realized what she had done. Draw in a calming breath and then apologize to him for her words and tone. Please just go back to the pack Tia. I will deal with Isabel and it will get sorted out or at least get her back to the pack so she can be assimilated or learn about what is going on so she can make a proper decision. Saw her look right at him, her expression softened also bully. Such a pretty name. I thought it was Izzy. He nodded also bully Jenkins, she actually is very stubborn and loyal to Piper, just like you were to my mother, are now to Lily headstrong even against me, tried to put me in my place once already, called me some not-so-nice names too. You'll love her. I see a lot of you in her he told her with a smile at the end, trying to appease her. Well, I hope she beats him one, for his behavior, she muttered. I'm sure she probably will at some point. Bradley smiled, he could actually see that happening at some point. Eddie does actually feel bad about what he and his wolf did. I believe Timber has been sulking since she left. Saw Tia's eyes widen and then move to her son. She huffed and shook her head, then stepped over to Eddie and hugged him just don't do anything else, stupid son, she murmured. Thomas handed Bradley all their passports and looked right at him, Alpha, if I may have a word in private. He'd spoken it as a question but Bradley got the feeling by the look on the man's face that they would be having a conversation. 
likely one posed by his own father and not to be had over the phone for all to hear. Bradley nodded, he narrowed his eyes on Tia for a good twenty seconds to make sure she understood he was in charge, not that he hadn't been for eleven years now, then walked away with Thomas to sit at another table. Across the room, in the Wolfen world, was not private in any way, Wolf's hearing would pick it up. Stepping away was just a common courtesy. Opened a mind link to the man, Alpha, Hadley told your father, you have a son with Piper Whitlock. Bradley knew it, the girl couldn't keep her mouth shut, he'd specifically asked her not to say anything about the boy to their father, yet she had gone ahead and done so. He'd asked purely because the fewer people that knew the less likely it was to get out and the safer they would be. Yes, apparently so. He acknowledged. Your father is greatly concerned about how this came about. Oh, is he now? Then you must be referring to the LCE Moon Pack, agreement, that father never saw fit to show me. Regarding the Whitlock women, and I will be having a word with him about that when I get home. Considering it's my head on the line he grated out. Was very angry about that, in fact. The child Bradley, how was he conceived, we need to know. It could well start a war and LCE Moon Pack is much larger than ours. He could actually hear the concern in the former Gamma's voice. He was also well aware of just how large the LCE Moon Pack was, nearly three times the size of his own, and they would not win a war against them, not even come close to it. She was in my bed one night when I got home. He shrugged, it was the truth. What can I say? A she-wolf in my bed. Did she give consent? He was asked instantly. Didn't say no. Bradley answered him did say please if I'll recall correctly, begged me not to stop at one point and told me she wanted all of me. And that is what she got, all of me. Though I had no idea who she was to me at the time he could only presume Thomas had been informed of all the details by his father and that was why they were having this chat right now I thought she was just a she-wolf itching for time with her alpha. Saw Thomas sigh heavily I hope that is what she tells her people from her mother's pack, if not Bradley, I'll understand the ramifications. Alpha Timothy already told me what he would do and that he would be taking her word over mine as well. It would have been nice if father had shown me that agreement. Perhaps I would have known who she was. That's unlikely from my understanding of it, Bradley. But yes he should have told you, we're all annoyed with that. Though he did believe, I don't care what he believed Bradley cut him clean off or thought. I'm the current Alpha in charge, have been for a long time, in fact. It's my life on the line, not his anymore. I think such formalities are supposed to be handed over, before even, the actual change of leadership is done. Yes, he grated. Saw the man nod his head, he could not argue with that. It was how it was supposed to be done, any and all alliance agreements that involved the reigning Alpha to pass on to the next Alpha had to be formally handed over so that the next Alpha in charge, knew what the hell was hanging over his head. Literally his head in this case. So that if his actions or any of his pack's actions could be construed as an act of war against another pack, or bring another Alpha to his pack with the right to duel him to the death over something he would know about it and could make sure those set rules were adhered to, to prevent such things. His father had been lax in his duties, even if he thought that Piper had been collected by her mother's family and returned to the LCE Moon Pack, that agreement with them still stood and held true. There was likely going to be one hell of an Alpha on Alpha yelling match when he got back to his pack after collecting Piper and his son and he had no idea how on earth he was going to get her to come with him either. He could apologize but he had absolutely no idea if that would work, whether or not she would even care for one at this point. The boy, however, he had every right to claim and insist on bringing back to the pack. He was not safe out there as a rogue, though Bradley did not want to use the boy as leverage 
use his own son like that. If he did, he would be no better in Piper's eyes than Alpha Timothy was. At this point, that was a last resort, really just wanted to sit down with her and see if they could talk it out. Though the last time she'd come face to face with him, had not gone down so well, Hadley by his side and him insisting on her getting the gown she wanted. No more of that, her own mother could take her shopping from now on. Their father's unit could go with her for protection instead of his. This time he would be approaching her without Hadley around and he was going to clear that misunderstanding up as soon as he possibly could, tell her Hadley was his little sister, had no idea if she would believe him didn't know if she even knew his father had a second chance mate. Though she would have been in the pack, ten at the time Hadley was born, but would have been going through her own grief at the loss of both her parents, and likely also felt completely abandoned by the pack itself. No one had looked after her, he had absolutely no idea how she survived on her own inside the pack, on her own at such a young age, there had been no one to care for her ever. Her life inside the pack had certainly not been a good one, so getting her to come home, to be part of a pack once more, could well be a very difficult thing. She was a rogue now and he had no hold over her at all. He couldn't just order her to do it, she'd likely stare at him and then laugh. He didn't want to threaten her in any way, that would just make her more resistant to coming home, more likely to hate pack life probably didn't like that now. So he was aiming to talk to her, to at least try and persuade her into coming home, to let Brandon come home to the pack, to see what his own world looked and felt like, to be inside a pack. Bradley had no idea at all if Brandon had any interactions with wolves at all, other than Alpha Timothy and that man had only threatened them on both occasions. Nothing good would have come from those interactions. The boy might well not be interested at all. Bradley had no idea what Piper had told him about wolves or life within a pack, but if she had told him anything it wasn't likely going to be anything good, she was unlikely to have any good memories at all. Though she could have told him nothing at all, or she could have told him how uncaring and horrible it was, as was likely her experience. He did not know, was going to have to find out the hard way by asking the boy to come home or if he wanted to come and see what pack life looked like. He was a complete stranger to his own child, there was no connection to his wolf Aspen, and that in itself could see Brandon outright reject him as his father, and refuse to come home as well, until there was a connection. He was not happy about that thought and neither was Benson, for that matter. Looked at Thomas go back to the pack Thomas. I don't even know at this point if I can bring her in. She thinks Hadley is my mate. And I don't even know if she raised Brandon with any knowledge of our kind. It could take a while. I suggest he pull him out of retirement and relieve my brother of Alpha duties so Timothy doesn't come to do him over Piper's treatment. When he likely has no knowledge of what is going on either. Put the one responsible for this particular mess back in the firing line. So to speak. Saw Thomas stand up it'll work itself out Brad, just, be calm, polite and don't force the situation. Forcing the situation is not my style, that is her own family's and I wouldn't be in this situation if her cousin hadn't threatened to take Brandon away from her in order to get her to go home with him. Only made her bolt clear out of the country. We'll call him. Try to sort that out as well. You do that. Because somehow, I don't think after all his threats and there was more than one, Piper is going to want to go to LCE Moon Pack to meet with the Whitlock elders at all and he didn't think she would be willing. Timothy should have led with, I think I'm your cousin. What pack were you from? Not a threat to haul her in. Should have explained himself to her to gain her trust. That would likely have gone a long way to helping the situation and she may have even gone with him, or allowed the Whitlock elders to come to her at her store for a sit-down conversation. Eddie hearing that Bradley had a son with Piper Harper, made his heart ache. 
That little bit more, for the lost Luna to his pack, he'd known she'd suffered greatly, had just never been able to do anything about it at all, and he had tried to. He searched the pack, hunted all over the place, gotten turned around so many times inside his own pack, looking for Piper, he'd nearly ripped his own hair out. Had been able to feel it when she was in pain, and desperately needed to comfort her for a very long time, but he'd just never been able to find her. Had not known who she was, what she looked like, where she lived in the pack, knew nothing of her, only her distress over what was happening to her. He'd tried desperately to hunt her down the day she'd actually rejected Bradley, he'd known she was somewhere inside the pack house, likely had to be looking right at Bradley to make that rejection, but still he'd not been able to find her. His fruitless search of the pack house that night had made him lose her altogether. Because why he was searching the pack house for her she had been running for the border, by the time he realized this, was headed for the border himself, he had felt her sever from him completely, their connection just vanished. He'd known instantly that what he had feared for years, had actually happened. She had left the pack entirely, severed all ties with it, unable to cope any longer with the pain there Alpha. Her mate was unwittingly causing her. He'd had no idea and trying to tell a wolf they had a mate somewhere and his going off to have s asterisk x with another was killing her, would not work. There was no way any wolf would believe that without scenting his mate, and that she was within his own pack, not a hope in hell of believing it. Only scenting out your mate could convince you, and your wolf you had a mate. Bradley was all about goddess gifted mates, wanted to find that one, that belonged to him and his wolf. If he had scented out his mate, they would have been together, there would have been a Luna ceremony and a massive celebration, for sure. So Eddie knew that the man had not scented her out, had not come across his mate, and he'd been home for full moon balls during the course of those three years. Hell, he'd been home on a full moon when there was no mating ball as well. That night she had not just rejected him, but the entire pack. Their western border was not that far from the city limits and once she severed ties to the pack, Eddie was unable to track her at all, and not actually knowing what she had looked like at the time, meant he could very well have come across her on the outskirts of the human city of Helena and not even known it was her at all. Now he knew why he couldn't ever detect her, that pendant she wore made her unsentable. It was a logistical nightmare. No wonder he and Timber had been turned around constantly, couldn't scent her, couldn't recognize her in his human form or his wolf form and he had been using all of Timber's senses to try and hunt her, couldn't it seemed, and not his fault, not that that matter. Had just made them feel inadequate in their ability as a gamma. Thought they were broken, that their gamma instincts were off and he couldn't fulfill his duty. He knew Bradley had given up dating and sleeping around after that night, when the next day, between Doc Samuel and Eddie's telling him what they thought was going on. But the damage to his mate was already done and she'd finally had enough and fled. Now as they flew across the Pacific Ocean, he was worried about her once again. Not even Eddie had thought there would be a child, between the two of them, it was just one night together. Bradley had told him he'd not nodded the girl. But to know just how much she had suffered inside the pack and then to become pregnant to her mate, who never knew who she was, to have that constant reminder for the rest of her life. Was the moon goddess so cruel to one she-wolf, to put her through so much and then to give her a constant reminder of what she could never have, it must have hurt her even more. Eddie had finally seen a picture of the boy, Brandon, he'd been told was his name. He actually looked more like Piper than Bradley, had her hair and skin tone, but had his father's very unique eyes. Made Eddie wonder how she'd handled seeing him stare up at her when he'd first been born. Had it caused her more pain? To see in the photos that the boy already has his wolf, had seen it on Cooper's phone, had the same white wolf eyes of Piper's wolf Harper. Was definitely a Whitlock more so than a Drake. 
he could only hope that had helped her with raising the boy. Cooper actually had quite a few photos of the boy, of Piper herself, and of Piper and the boy together. He'd spent the evening and morning watching them apparently, snapped a load of pictures, had even followed them as stealthily as he could on their morning run. Told Eddie she and Brandon had a really good bond, and that was a giant relief to him, seeing the two of them together, laughing and smiling before going on that run eased some of his own pain, his own guilt at not being there for her. He knew they were flying to help Bradley bring Piper in, that he was going to be needed with all his gamma abilities in full swing in all likelihood. Bradley had already explained to him what he'd sensed on that first encounter with her, it was what Eddie was expecting, it was what they were all expecting, even Bradley. Though Eddie didn't know if they were going to bring her back into the pack, she had experienced a lot of pain, tremendous amounts of pain, suffered so much that she had left and now lived as a human, with a very public human life. Eddie was hoping, knowing who she was now, would kick his instincts in properly. Already knew he could not send her, had stared hard at the photos of her trying to commit her to his memory, so that he wouldn't need his sense of smell to know who she was. That day, outside of her store, while he'd been trying to console a very upset Hadley over Piper Harper tearing up the picture of the dress she dreamed of wearing one day. Piper had stepped out of her store and looked right at them, each one of them in turn, all of them there for Hadley, had rolled her eyes and walked away. He could only imagine her pain that day too. He'd seen the way she'd actually looked at them, knowingly, she knew who Cooper was the pack beta, had looked at him and then Harry, had looked to see how many of her former Alpha's unit were there, and seen all of them. That roll of her eyes he wasn't sure if that had been at Hadley needing comfort, or if it was because all of her former pack's Alpha unit were standing across the road from her. All of them looking right at her, and had no idea, even now. Years later, after she had left, what she was, who she had been, should have been to them. But he had felt more than annoyance roll off of her, and that something had itched at him, she'd felt kind of familiar to him. But he didn't recall her at all, and so other than watching her walk away down the street and putting a hand on Cooper to stay him, he'd let it go. Perhaps now he should have let Cooper go after her, might have seen the boy sooner. Perhaps she had been off to pick him up from school that day, it had been around the right time. He'd known something was off, but it had been years since he'd felt her, since he'd sensed anything about the Alpha's missing mate. Eddie had to admit, he had forgotten what it felt like to feel her as the years had passed the memory of what she felt like to him or lack of what she felt like to him, had faded, dulled and eventually passed altogether. He'd had the feeling that day, that Piper Harper was not human, was something else, but that had been all he'd known. Now he had to pull himself together, he was going to be needed, all his gamma instincts which had failed him at every turn where she was concerned, was going to have to pull on everything in him to help ease her pain, get her to calm down and stay calm. From what he knew of her, what he'd researched and was doing on this very flight, gathering intel to help him to help her. Piper Harper was very much more human than a werewolf nowadays. And to his knowledge, none of them had ever seen her wolf at all, a description only from her file of a grey and white wolf. Eddie doubted she had shifted in a very long time. He'd not sensed her wolf at the time and he should have been able to, even from across the street, his instincts should have picked up on that much about her, but they had not. Perhaps her wolf was too weak after all the years of their mate not recognizing them, mating with others that she could no longer shift at all. Though both Bradley and Hadley had seen her wolf size, and Harper push forward and be fully on the surface, it had only been brief. So he knew she was not gone altogether. Cooper had also reported that it was her wolf, Harper, and the boy's wolf out on that morning run together, so maybe Harper was there but only inside Piper's mind. If that was the case, 
then getting her and Bradley back together could resolve that and bring her wolf back out fully, given time. Though how he was going to concentrate on Piper, when in all likelihood his own maid Izzy, would be right next to her, he had no idea. She'd run away from him too. Though he knew that was because she, as a human, had no idea what they were to each other. Even though he'd gotten her to state she was his and he had claimed her right back, the woman had no understanding at all and so had left. Eddie knew it was because she felt like she'd betrayed Piper to him, knew he worked for Bradley and that Piper had warned the woman she'd be seduced by him and end up in his bed, before she knew it and Piper had not been wrong about that. But for very different reasons. He'd not seduced LZZY to get Piper's information out of her. That thought had gone out the window, the moment his mouth had touched hers, from that moment he'd only wanted to claim LZZY, make her his as had timber. They'd waited a very long time for their mate and had become impulsive and demanding, all of his wolf's needs to claim, own and dominate the situation, to take complete control of her had surfaced and that was what they had done. Only to have her sneak out and run away from them, drive away and tell them she didn't belong to them, when in fact she did belong to him, as he now belonged to her. Now Eddie had to find a way to help his alpha with his Luna, all the while not claiming his own mate, when she was going to be right in front of him. Both Eddie and Timber knew that they had screwed up everything, needed to get Izzy alone and apologize, ask her out, was the right thing to do. She was human and would need to date him as she would any man in the human world. A long, slow road to becoming his and Timber's, and they wanted her now, right next to them, wondered if Bradley would consider helping him first, so he could better focus on Piper in return. They were both currently in a situation where they actually needed each other's help, literally. Eddie needed his alpha to sit down and talk with his runaway human mate and explain to her about what Eddie was to her, not all of it at once, just to convince her it was very important for her to give him a chance, to get to know him. Did not know how this was going to work at all. Didn't even know if they would be able to sort this mess out. It was likely that if Izzy told Piper all that had happened at her sister's wedding with Eddie, Piper would be dead certain LZZY was his mate. She would also know that Eddie, would be hunting LZZY to get her back right at this very minute. Might have warned Izzy, if Piper did cling completely to the human world, to her human life that she had created for herself, she might actively warn LZZY away from him and those two women were very close. Izzy was loyal to Piper. Which was a good thing for them to have considering if Piper could be brought in, and Brad could win her over, meant that the Luna and Gamma's mate bond was already there in full swing. It did make him wonder if they had been drawn to each other because of who they should have been to each other. He'd already found out that Izzy had been with Piper for most of the time she'd been away from the pack. Perhaps the goddess had pulled them together, both of them seemed to need each other. Izzy had that stupid human who wouldn't let go of her and she'd left him years ago, yet he was still trying to coherence her into a marriage with him. One that from what he could tell her father wanted as well. But his Izzy was good and strong-willed, had said no and meant it. Did not want anything to do with that stupid human man, had run away from him and her family, just like Piper had in fact. Wondered if that was what had bonded the women together. He also wondered if LZZY had ever seen Harper on the surface at all. It was a possibility. They had worked together for years. He had no idea how much control Piper had or what type of temperament Harper had either, for that matter. Though Harper had pushed forward and growled at Bradley that day in her studio, and he was very curious about that. As not many mates would growl at each other with full-on aggression, so he didn't know if the rejection she had uttered was valid or not. No one did at this point, they still had to figure that out, and likely first before anything else happened. Landing in Sydney, neither he nor Bradley had gotten a wink of sleep. Cooper and Harry on the other hand, slept quite well, 
though Eddie knew he and Bradley had their own concerns. There wasn't even a plan of action at this point. Locate Piper in her hotel and then go from there. That was it so far. They already knew which hotel Piper was in had tracked Piper Whitlock's credit card, booked themselves right into the very same hotel, a penthouse suite that would house all four of them. Both he and Bradley needed to sleep before going anywhere near either of their mates or their tired, agitated wolves would likely shove forward and take what they thought was theirs without a thought to the actual consequences. Eddie could not let Timber out near LZZY at this point, he'd already ripped out of Eddie in a ticked-off rage, that she'd run away from him. Had been going to mark her in his wolf form that day, not something that would have gone down well at all. Timber was still unhappy that she had run away, and was not at all happy she'd gone halfway around the world to get away from them. Was not about to let her get away again. She might be human, but she was his human as far as he was concerned, and he was not giving her up, period. Even if she never turned, and remained human after they marked her, and it did happen, Timber was still of the opinion she was his mate, and he wanted her. It had only been Eddie that night with her. Timber had mostly been in control but had not pushed forward to mate her. His wolf, he knew, was very aggressive and could likely hurt her. Things would be different once they marked her though, if she accepted them fully, her body would also accept Timber and his wolf's needs, regardless of how rough he got with her, she would enjoy it. He was not one to be interested in humans they were not his thing, not his wolf's thing either, but LZZY drove them completely crazy, the minute he'd k, s s e d her, they had just craved her like the air they breathed to keep them alive. He looked at himself in the hotel bathroom mirror, he was showered and clean from their long journey, but he actually did look tired, not something he'd ever recalled looking like before, already being away from her, was starting to take its toll on him. He needed his mate back in his arms. LZZY, Izzy woke up to half a dozen missed calls from her father, and GR0ANED annoyingly as she saw there were three calls from an unknown number on her phone's display. Those three calls coincided with her father's. It was also a number with Maine's prefix. She had actually switched off her phone after leaving the family estate, had known that her father would be calling her to either hound her about Philip, or perhaps now after what had gone on with Edward, as he'd introduced himself to her father, to find out just what was going on in her life. Izzy had sighed and stared at the phone's message bank service which told her there were currently nine voice messages to be heard, listened to them in order of receiving them, best to get it all in the right context. The first voice message was from her father demanding that she come home immediately and explain herself to him. Just exactly what was going on. Why Philip had gone to him and told him, that he'd been told she and Edward were in fact getting married in around nine weeks' time. Izzy had stared right at her phone in complete shock, she'd not said that, had told her father that Edward was nothing to her. But it was obvious he had seen the way the man was all over her. After she'd stopped that fight between Edward and Philip that had been brewing, she did recall that Edward had literally carried her right out of the family ballroom. But where had he gotten the getting married thing? She did not know in nine weeks, what the hell was that? The second voice message was also her father. He seemed quite a bit calmer in this message, just wanted her to call him so he could talk to her about Edward maybe just trying to cajole her into calling him back. The man even half-heartedly apologized for yelling at her in the first message he'd left. The third message was from an infuriated Philip, who stated that her behavior during Joni's wedding had been completely unacceptable, that if she kept up this type of behavior, he would no longer be willing to marry her. Izzy had nearly laughed out loud, that stupid man still thought he was going to be able to marry her all because her father said he'd make he. It was never going to happen. Message 4, once again her father'll sweetheart, 
I think El may have overreacted somewhat. Edward appears to be an upstanding, wealthy man and I think it is time you brought him home to introduce your fiancé to us formally. Your mother also agrees with this. Call me back sweetheart. Izzy rolled her eyes at that message, a wealthy, upstanding man, that just meant her father had actually started looking into Edward Patrick of Drake Industries and had seen the man's bio, and had liked it. Nothing more. As for that your mother also agrees he had likely thrown that in, because she was much closer to her mother than her father was all. The fifth message Philip once again, Alsobili, this Edward character may have money, but he is not aligned to you or your family's needs. I am the better choice. Call me back so we can sort this out once and for all though in the background of that call she could hear his current girlfriend calling out to him, to get off the phone she'd brought him lunch so they could eat together. Yes, he was a still a pig of a man, she thought. Got a girlfriend and trying to make another girl come home to marry him. It also sounded to her like Philip had also looked into Edward, and did not like what he saw, must be either of two things, Edward had more money than Philip did or he knew that, her father was now leaning towards Edward himself, so he was trying to wrest control of the situation. He wanted her father's company and wouldn't get it without marrying into the family. Message 6 Once again her father Isabel, Edward sounds like a proper gentleman. I managed to speak with him, though only briefly, he was about to board a flight home. Now I understand that the two of you had a bit of a fight. I'm certain it can be worked out. Call the man he wants to apologize to you. Sweet goddess, her own father, had actually managed to contact Edward himself. She could well imagine that phone call, likely a welcome to the family's son, had probably gone ahead and invited the man home for dinner as well. Why did this always happen? Always had men trying to control her life. Her father was always trying to marry her off. Philip always still around, though she knew that and just wanted the family company, he could go and chase Cordelia if he wanted the company that bad. He was not about to get it through her. She had no connection to her father's company and intended on keeping it that way. Voice message 7 Her actual mother, though off her father's phone, so likely coherenced into it. Honey it's mum, please do call your father back. He's starting to worry to the point that he is not willing to leave the estate home here in Maine and return to his city apartment heard her father's voice in the background tell her it's my house. I will stay as long as I like. Then he'd taken the phone from her mother's hand and grated down the line at her Sobley Jenkins, if you do not call me back I will make my way to Drake Industries and find out myself exactly what Edward Patrick's intentions are with my daughter. You call me back right now. Again Elzizy Y rolled her eyes, he would know by now she did not respond to his threats, that she would call him back when she was good and ready not when he wanted her to. Checked the time of the message. All these calls had been spaced out over the course of the day she had left and flown to Australia, unbeknownst to her family. She had on purpose left her phone turned off because she figured that Edward or Bradley Drake himself would have gotten her mobile number off of Laura as well as her work mobile. Didn't want to speak to either of them possessive arrogant men either. She had really not wanted to deal with any of them, wondered if this constant need to be in control of her, was why Piper had left Bradley Drake's company in the first place. He was a man who appeared to be just as relentless as her own father was. They were both like a dog with a bone, just couldn't let it go. Both controlling, possessive men, were everywhere, it seemed, and could hunt and track with all the money they had at their disposal no escape. Sighed, she and Piper very much liked to be in full control of their own lives, neither of them liked to be told what to do. Smiled at thought actually, she had seen Piper go head to head with some pretty wealthy and influential people, both man and woman. She just stood there and stared them down, it was like the woman had no fear really. 
or at least none that LZZY had seen until Bradley Drake had strolled into her store that day. She'd never seen Piper so rattled, never seen her actually run from anyone. And she had run. Izzy had heard the doors banging closed in quick succession on her way out of the store. Seen the way Bradley had stalked out of her office, not her studio. It was the very first time she had ever seen Piper be anything but cool, calm, and collected. The eighth message was Philip once more. She huffed in annoyance, it's been all day now, Isabel. I am done waiting on you, you're so very childish all the time, you should grow up. I will be marrying Caitlin Bateman. Not you. We are done. Don't call me any more. Any more? The man was delusional. She'd never called him not once in all the time she had left him. Finally, the man had given up on her, it was about time, was happy to hear that message, near hooped with joy to hear it. She really hoped that this Caitlin knew that he was a cheating pig of a man. Though it was very unlikely that the woman knew anything. Hell if LZZY hadn't gone into her father's office building, impromptu that day, to have dinner with her sister, she would never have seen what he was, been none the wiser and likely have been married to the man herself. The ninth message was once again her father, Isabel, I am very disappointed in you. L just found out that you have left the country, gone to Australia. This is completely unacceptable. Come home at once or L will send Philip to collect you. Izzy did actually laugh at that one. Guess her father was unaware of the fact that Philip had called her and told her he'd had enough of her childish behavior. Good luck father she murmured softly, amused at the thought of him telling Philip to go and get her and Philip stating no. Probably be the first time he'd ever said it. Philip was going to decline that request. They might be business partners but without the hope of getting her for himself, he would not lower himself to being a lapdog and come and collect her. Looked at her work mobile and wondered if she dared to turn that one on. Mr. Drake Industries, had that number, which also meant so did Edward now in all likelihood. She sat there and stared at it for a very long time, then turned it on. A part of her was very curious as to if what Piper had told her was true that he would hunt her to the very ends of the earth to get her back. There were several missed calls on the phone, nil no messages left, though, there was a text message that stated Miss Jenkins my name is Cooper, please call me back urgently. Who was Cooper? She did not know a Cooper and there was no Mr. Cooper that she was in contact with that she recalled. But to call her Miss Jenkins, it was likely that this man was one of her father's men, probably just trying to track her down, so they could come and collect her, though when she looked at the message time it had been sent when she had been in lax on her layover. Then just a few hours ago, a text message that read Izzy I'm sorry, I did not mean to raise my voice at you. Please text me back. Let me know you're safe, Eddie. I will be out of contact on a flight, but please let me know you're okay. I'll see you soon baby. Got herself out of bed and headed right for Piper's room. She was already awake, up and showered. No real surprise there, the woman usually ran at sunrise every day. Showed her the message, biting her L, P while Piper read it. On a flight, he'll see me soon. Piper's side likely used his connections to track your credit card and got your flight details on his way to collect you LZZY. It was just one night. He was clearly crazy. Not to him. Piper shook her head. Come on Piper. It was just like, really good s asterisk x. That does not denote a relationship. In his world, it does. I'm sorry LZZY, I did try to warn you about him. Piper had warned her she knew that. So what do I do then? I don't know Piper's side, though I would not specifically tell him the word no, or that you don't want to be with him. 
what? Why not? She could feel little alarm bells going off inside of her mind. Might not go down so well. It's very complicated, Izzy. He is likely coming to collect you. So you can be swayed into dating him. He will want that and likely won't take no for an answer. He's not so. Piper half laughed at her. Yes, they all are. Must have what they want. Regardless as to what anyone else wants. And those four men. They are the top of the food chain. No one dares tell them no. It is practically unheard of. You did. Izzy reminded her. I did. Piper nodded at her heart to blazes to be honest with you. Bradley took your no, didn't come after you. Izzy stated curiously. He didn't know I had said no and I left the moment I said it, he was asleep and unaware at the time really? I left Edward while he was asleep too. She half smiled now, so much in common. Mm, there is a difference though. Edward knew who he was sleeping with. Bradley did not, I was just another girl in his bed to him she shrugged. Edward desired you. Wanted you and got to have you. In his mind, you're his now. You agreed, told him you were his. I only said that to get the actual s asterisk x, Piper. He was holding out on me, made me say it to get what I wanted from him at the time. Mm, I understand that. But that's the thing LZZY, you did actually tell him, agreed to be his. So, this is a nightmare, Izzy muttered. Watched as Piper actually laughed softly welcome to my world. Don't know if I want to be part of your world. It's weird to be honest. Really weird she sank down on Piper's bed do L even get a choice. Piper sat next to her. There is usually a choice. Think carefully though, LZZY, Edward could in fact be your Mr. Right. Yeah right, that man can have any woman he wants, I imagine. Look at him. He'll only have eyes for you now, is he? What, she wondered if that was true. Could she date a man like Edward? Could she keep a man like Edward? Satisfy a man like him? There were much prettier women out there, some of them with way more soul experience than her, willing to do soul acts that she wasn't. Edward did seem to be a very dominant man, he was likely to have more than the one fetish, she'd seen. Izzy, I'm not going to tell you what to do where he is concerned. Just, do what is right for you. Maybe that includes dating him, to see if you like him. Piper, you told me to stay away from him. Now you're telling me to date him, that is very confusing. You've slept with him now. So things have changed in that department. No matter my feelings about Drake Industries, you have the right to see for yourself and choose what you want as well. You might like it there, fit right in. Just never fit in. It's why I left. Izzy was more confused now than before, she didn't know what to do. Should I text him back? That is up to you is all Piper said. Izzy wandered back to her room and stared at the phone at the message Eddie had left her. He'd started it with an apology, wanted to know if she was safe, told her his plans, again wanted to know if she was okay and then told her he'd see her soon. They were the words of a boyfriend. Not a man who she had just met, sounded caring and worried about her. She sighed, tried to tell herself not to read anything into it, he would be just like the rest, his eyes would wander to some other woman, he was the most charming of the group, that's what Piper had told her, sat and stared right at that message for a very long time. I'm fine she finally texted him back and left it at that. Tossed the phone onto the bed a second later, goddess what had she gotten herself into with this man? Piper Piper sat watching LZZY, the woman was all over the place about Edward, 
had stopped calling him Mr. Yummy, she'd noted. Was very confused about that text message he had sent to her via the work mobile. Piper, however, was not confused by it at all. He was upset that his human mate had run away from him, was honest in his apology for yelling at her, likely felt bad and thought it contributed to her running away from him. His concern for her safety and well-being was completely genuine. The whole, I'll see you soon, just meant that he was on his way here, coming to see her. Wanted to be near her. In all likelihood, he and his wolf were anxious that she had up and left and gone halfway around the world. She was his mate and he and his wolf had scared her off. His only desire now would be to fix it. Placate her and win her over. They would not like that she was alone and without a pack for protection. She was human and therefore very vulnerable in their eyes. If she'd been a werewolf, well, she would have understood everything and there would be no problem. But LZZY was not. Piper had the feeling that Izzy would text him back, the woman was drawn to him, that much was clear to her. Humans could feel the bond, it was just not the same as a wolf. To them it was a strong connection and when touched by their mate, though they did not get those hot electric tingles, they still felt like it was the most ER0TIC touch they'd ever felt, craved it. It still felt completely amazing to them. Made them hot and needy, wanton, easily swayed into their mate's bed on any given occasion. From what Izzy had told her, she just couldn't help herself where Edward was concerned. Did not understand how she'd wound up in bed with him. Piper knew that Izzy was not the type to sleep around, dated yes, but didn't just go with anyone, had rules. She was actively looking for Mr. Wright and according to Izzy. Mr. Wright would be happy to wait for S asterisk X with her. He would not look at another woman while they were out together want her to feel comfortable with their relationship and only have s asterisk x when she was ready to. Always came back to Philip, who had cheated on her, scarred that woman's heart. Philip had not been her first lover but he had been her first real serious relationship and she had thought at the time he was perfect and had intended on marrying him. Then that sob had not appreciated what he'd had. A strong and capable woman, with a mind of her own who was intelligent and loyal to him, she did not believe in multiple partners at the same time, thought it was icky was the word she had used once. When Izzy saw a man's eyes tracking another woman while they were dating, out on a date, having a meal or seeing a movie, she ended it. Got rid of him, believed he would not be faithful. Philip's betrayal had sowed doubt into Izzy's heart, and unfortunately, Piper hadn't thought any man was ever going to live up to the woman's standards. Now there was Edward. He on the other hand, would live up to that standard, his eyes would never wander, not even if a parade of women or she-wolves walked past behind Izzy. He would not care about that, he only had eyes for one, his mate and that was Izzy. It must be nice to have that. She sighed as pain touched her a little. She would never know, her and the mate bond, it was just pure pain. That literally gutted her and ripped her apart. Cursed as she was. But she would not deny her friend the right to feel loved and cherished and Edward would do just that, give her everything she desired if LZZY let him in. Piper knew she was likely going to lose LZZY at some point now, it was just a matter of time, she supposed had no idea how she was going to deal with that. Or even if she could be happy about it. Not considering where she was going. She was going to lose her best and only real friend to a place that had caused her nothing but agony and heartache. Wondered absently if she could get Izzy to promise her, not to tell them anything about Brandon. It would be difficult for her to do. Especially once she was initiated into the pack and shifted which is when she would really understand the connection wolves had to their offspring, and their mates. Piper was not about to upend her life, she'd left all that heartache and pain behind her, 
left pack life for a very good reason and no one and nothing was going to drag her back into it, so she could see all those mated wolves happy and loved up, no she was not going to be forced to watch and be constantly reminded of what she could never have. She certainly didn't want to be around wolves, didn't want nor need to come across another mate who would not send her out and cause her all that pain and agony which she would not be able to hide from Brandon, there was no way he wouldn't see it or hear it, let alone have to watch her waste away and get all sickly again. No, she was human now and she would stay that way. They all ate breakfast and Izzy put a call into the realtor about her apartment, was concerned about the money Piper was shelling out for this suite. Piper was not, it was just money, she had plenty of it, and Izzy knew that as well. It wasn't like she went splashing it all over the place, she just mostly bought stuff for Brandon with it or took him on holidays other than that it stayed in the bank. Piper had never had much growing up inside that pack, no one to buy her new clothes or toys to play with, not even a computer to help with her schoolwork as she'd gotten older. She had just learned to use the pack house laundry of a night time to do her own washing, used the lost and found bins and the donated clothing racks to find clothes that fit her. She had eaten three meals a day in the pack house dining room like all wolves could, no one cared that she did, hell no one noticed her doing it. To keep her schooling up to date she had used the pack house library computers and their Wi-Fi. She'd cut her own hair when it got too long to manage and bothered her, just usually spent her days sitting inside her parents' house, missing them mostly. Until one day she had come home from school to find it had been cleaned out and completely empty. She'd been eleven at the time, and had not understood that at all. Didn't know where she was supposed to live if not in her family home so had taken to living in the pack house basement where she had found some of her parents' furniture stored, to still feel close to them. It was a place where the pack stored unwanted things until clean-out day once a year, or others came through to look at the stuff and see if they wanted any of it. She'd stayed there in the basement until she'd felt that first pain of betrayal, and had found that abandoned cabin as she'd been trying to escape the pain. That place had not been much but it had been out in the middle of the forest, away from everyone that could hear her cries of agony and pain. So that was where she had stayed after turning 18. When not buried in her work, she'd gotten used to being alone a long time before turning 18, so living out there alone in the woods was nice. No one had bothered her out there, no one ran into her out there and blamed her for not moving out of the way, so she'd made it neat and tidy put in some curtains for privacy, and had even managed to drag a mattress from the pack house basement storage area to the cabin to sleep on. It had been simple and basic and if anyone did stroll in there, well they wouldn't send her anyway. She'd seen rogue attacks from that cabin over the years, none of them had smelled her as they had crept past the cabin, none of them had come for her also unable to detect her, just like everyone in this pack. She had even been the one to report a rogue or several sneaking about the pack woods, had alerted the pack Beta Cooper, never the Alpha himself. Couldn't deal with that man's voice inside her head. Cooper had always taken her seriously, told her to get to a safe place and hide if she couldn't get to the pack house. Being that she was a female and reporting rogues out in a heavily wooded part of the pack, he likely worried for her safety, she supposed worried that those rogues would find her and have a piece of her. They couldn't have what they couldn't detect and they never scented her out, just like the pack didn't, she didn't fear them, just stood perfectly still and let them pass by, and now she was one. Piper sighed and pulled herself from her memories as Izzy tapped her arm. Where were you? she asked. Nowhere in particular. She half smiled at the woman. Not ready for at least three weeks, still got tenants in there. It's not a big deal, Izzy. I can afford the hotel. Wouldn't have booked it if I couldn't, come on don't worry about it and as if to prove it, told her and Brandon to get dressed. They were all going shopping. Piper had seen the time of Edward's text message. 
If he was leaving right before he texted LZZY and it had read that way, the man wouldn't get here for another 12 hours or so, depending on layovers. It could well be longer than that, depending on where he had been when he texted LZZY, on the east coast where LZZY had been? Montana where the pack was? Or on the west coast? She didn't know, though, if they had still been looking for her, at her stores were all on the west coast. So at the earliest, late tonight, would be when he arrived and he'd be jet-lagged and all cramped from flying, and wouldn't be looking for until tomorrow at least. So today was a carefree day for all. Piper let LZZY know this, after she had looked over her shoulder for like the tenth time when out shopping, she seemed to understand and settle, was actually able to relax and enjoy their shopping trip to the Pitt Street Mall. Piper bought new clothes for all of them. Today was her treat, just to show LZZY why she didn't care about the money side of things and they were all shopped out by 2 p.m. and returned to the hotel to sag down on the couch. She and LZZY had coffee and cake while Brandon set up his new PS5 so he could play online games with his friends back home in the States. Picked up her phone when it rang at 2130 and was more than a little surprised to see her neighbor Ingrid's number flashing on the screen. Answered it, hi Ingrid, what is wrong, she asked. Ingrid would never just call her for no reason, only ever when she saw something suspicious in the street. That woman did love to sit in her living room and drink tea or coffee and watch her neighbors, lived across the road from Piper. Piper, are you moving, and did not tell me? What no? Piper frowned, that was a very odd question to be asked. I'm on an impromptu trip to my store, so I'm out of the States, but not moving why? Well, I'm standing in my living room, watching people, like four of them, quite big guys, and they have parked what looks like a moving van in your driveway. What? She was more than shocked by this news, and considerably confused as well. Yes Piper, oh hang on, there is another vehicle pulling up, a SUV and they're all talking to each other. Unloading boxes. Hey your garage is open now. What the hell? She muttered, had to be Alpha Timothy, trying to force her hand once again. Packing up all her stuff and moving it back to his pack. I'm not moving Ingrid, call the police, those people are thieves. Oh my, right away Piper. Wait, what company is that mover van from? Can you get me a logo? I'll have to call the company and tell them what is going on. Tell them I did not approve it. Um I can't see it from here, I'll go over there and demand they stop at once. No. Just call the police. Don't risk yourself, Ingrid. All right. I'll do it now the line disconnected. That self-centered, arrogant, was still trying to force her to move to his pack and had actually sent movers to do so. He thought just because she was unaffiliated he could push her around. Well, he was in for a rude shock. She was Piper Harper, a well-known human designer. If he wanted a war with her, she would give him one, a very public human world one. That man could not just drag her from her life, and force her into his pack, not without Brandon as leverage, and she and her boy were halfway around the world. Alpha's always thinking they could have whatever they wanted. Likely, he just wanted a piece of her profit line. She knew any pack affiliated business meant that the wolf had to hand over between 30% and 50% of their profit margin. It went right into the pack funds. It was each wolf's way of being a productive member of the pack, showing their support to help better the pack. Give it funds to upgrade buildings and schools and build new buildings etc. Well, she had worked hard to get to where she was, and no Alpha was going to step into her life and claim what she had accomplished all by herself, on her own, with no help from them. He could well shove it up that of his. She had lawyers, 
just needed confirmation that it was him so she could take that bastard on. Charge him with theft, hell she had a working studio in that house, could well be considered that he was out to steal her designs as well. They were worth quite a bit, some of them upwards of 50,000 or more. Grand theft she'd be charging him with and make it very public she would. That man was going to have to back off and explain himself to the humans. Got a multimedia text from Ingrid, a photo of the moving truck's logo, stared right at it nearly dumbfounded. Black Haven moving CO, and the photo showed the PAX logo in the bottom corner of Black Lake with a rising moon coming from it. The phone number and address along the bottom of the logo were Al Blackhaven Pack details, then along the very bottom under that were the words printed in black capitals, owned by Drake Industries. What the hell was going on? Sent back a thank you text for the info. Now, she had no idea what to do. She could take on Alpha Timothy Avery, not a big issue. But Bradley Drake himself... She had secrets from that man, bit her L, P and wondered if Brandon was in fact still a secret at all. If Bradley had tracked her to her home and then taken it upon himself to enter her home, he'd have seen photos of Brandon, likely have recognized his own eyes. To track down her home address, though? He had to have figured out who she actually was, a Whitlock, and that name would crop up in his PAX database. She muttered, she could not take on Bradley Drake, he was a lawyer himself, and a simple DNA test, which she knew he would insist on, would prove Brandon to be his. Even in the human world, he'd be granted access to the boy. It would likely be a very messy, public battle. Either that or he would go to the Wolfen Council and just claim she had kept him an alpha from his heir had not told him about the child and an alpha claiming his heir from a rogue female, she did not stand a chance. The Wolfen Council would grant him all rights to his son and heir, and if he was moving her things, to his pack, and that is likely what was happening, he was already intending on claiming the boy. It wasn't enough that she had to suffer his new mate, he was likely going to use that Wolfen Council and the Wolfen Laws to force her and Brandon to live inside the pack and she was certain he could, because she was unaffiliated and held no rank or status of any kind. Her human world would not be taken into account. Perhaps Alpha Timothy was her best option right this minute, stood up as she realized it was not going to be just Edward coming, it was going to be Bradley himself and the rest of his Alpha unit coming for her son. He obviously knew who she was, a former PAC member. Her real last name, Whitlock. It was the only way he could have found her house. Her passport and credit cards she'd used to come out here were also under Whitlock, he could track her as easily as Eddie had LZZY. Turned her eyes to the clock, they would likely be here in the country already, not long ago landed they could very well be here in this hotel, banging on her door any time he liked. Though she doubted he would know what room she was in and he couldn't just wander the halls and try to scent her, that wouldn't work. But it was entirely possible that Edward could already scent Izzy, or that any one of those men could charm the woman at the front desk to give them her room number. This was not good. She had no idea what to do about it either. They could well have booked right into this hotel themselves, have all the exits covered, that's what she would do. There were four of them and though she was unsentable to them and could likely slip past unnoticed, with Aspen now revealed it was unlikely that Bradley wouldn't feel drawn to his child and there was no way that LZZY was getting past Edward, that man would be hunting with all his wolf's senses, hearing, sight and smell. She could use LZZY as a distraction to get away, but that wasn't fair to the woman. Throwing her to the wolves, she snorted in amusement at her own thought. Literally at the wolves. Then she sighed no she couldn't do that, was going to just have to wait and see. Bradley, Bradley was about to crash out and sleep in his hotel bed. He'd not slept a single wink on the plane out here, hadn't even tried 
had been awake now for almost 30 hours now and was exhausted, needed to sleep so that he could have a clear head in the morning, when they made plans to go and get Piper, Brandon and LZZY. Did not want to be a grumpy, surly S.0.B. That would yell and rant and rave. That would not help his cause at all. Nope, he had to be rested and calm, Piper was unlikely to want anything to do with him and he was going to have to make her. Though he did want to do that gently. Cooper was right. He needed tact where she was concerned. His phone was ringing and to be honest, he just wanted to leave his face buried in the soft pillow and ignore it, heard its incessant ringing tone and snarled at it, as he blindly reached for it, with his hand, knew it was on the bedside table on charge right this minute, somewhere over there, probably have better luck reaching for it, if he actually opened his eyes and looked at what he was doing. But was too tired. Put it to his ear after hitting the green glowing answer circle on the screen, what? He snarled annoyingly with his face still half buried in the pillow. Alpha it's Luke, heard of your removalist team, we've hit a snag on moving that she-wolf's belongings. What's the snag? He groaned. Of course there was a problem. Nothing about Piper was ever easy. He pushed himself up and rolled over, hit the speaker button and dropped the phone onto the bed. Closed his eyes and wondered if he could catch a break just once, where she was concerned. The neighbor across the road called the police and reported us as thieves. Bradley frowned and shook his head. How would she know? I don't know, the police want the paperwork, for the move. So give it to them. I sorted that out. Put my signature on it. Hmm, but, her signature is not on that paperwork humans, he muttered. In his world it was not required, he was the alpha and his word was law. He scrubbed a hand over his face, so tired, he didn't have the energy to deal with this. Set himself up completely and leaned on the headboard. One of them police officers nearby. I can talk to. Sure though, though, he asked tiredly. We're all getting arrested, I believe. Bradley shook his head. Put one of them on the phone, find the one in charge, Luke. It took less than a minute for a voice to come down the line. Senior Constable Grayson, who am I speaking with? Good morning. It was barely seven in the morning over there. Senior Constable Grayson used the man's full title, he knew they hated when you got it wrong. I'm Bradley Drake, of Drake Industries, those are my movers and I think this is just a misunderstanding. L.S. it now? Not from the call that we received. Who may I ask made that call? Was it my lovely Piper herself, which I doubt, or was it one of her busybody neighbors? kept his voice light and calm and addressed Piper, the owner of the house, they were all standing in front of by name and with familiarity, so that the officer knew, Bradley knew who the owner of the house was. LT doesn't matter who made the call, Mr. Drake. Until I see or hear from Miss Whitlock about this matter, it's trespassing at the least. Bradley shook his head. Actually it is not. Piper Whitlock is moving to Montana, and will be working alongside Drake Industries. Which is my company. My movers are there packing up her belongings, that is all, helping her to move. I'd like to hear that from Miss Whitlock herself. Is she there with you to confirm this information? The man, it seemed, did know how to do his job, not at this said moment no off in Australia I believe readying to open her new store had to keep this man thinking he and Piper were friends and that him knowing her schedule should help with that. My men do have moving documents. I've seen it. Nothing on that paperwork, has Miss Whitlock's signature on it at all. So that is not proof she has agreed to this. Bradley sighed, I'll assure you, I am not stealing her belongings, just moving them to her new residence in Montana. I'll need her to confirm that, 
till then your men are all being arrested and detained. That is not necessary, I assure you. It is. That call from her busybody neighbor stated it was Miss Whitlock herself that told her to call the police, that those men of yours were thieves. So I will arrest them all. Detain them for as long as I can, until Miss Whitlock calls and clears up this matter herself or states to press charges, have a good day Mr. Drake, was it, then the line clicked off. So much for getting any sleep, human neighbors. If that was the actual case, he wondered just how much information Piper now had on his movers. Had her neighbor reported the moving company or would Piper think it was Timothy? That man had threatened her and had been going to take her to his pack. Put a call into his father and told him what was going on, that the pack movers were going to need lawyers and bail money. His father had huffed at him in annoyance and stated have you got Piper yet? informed the man that they had only just landed barely an hour ago and just made it to their hotel, that he knew she had checked into this hotel. Izzy had not used her credit card to check in anywhere so it was likely both women were together. He did not want to go banging on her hotel door, because it was late at night here, it would wait until morning. Son, that woman is always a step ahead of you, got away from you at the store stayed hidden from you even when she was there, helped out Hadley and still got away from you. Got away from her own cousin and left the country unchecked. Do you think she's so easily catch Abel? You can't smell her, none of you can. I know that. Bradley snarled right at his father. Maybe if you hadn't screwed this all up when her mother died, when she was just ten years old. This wouldn't be happening. He turned his tired and angry thoughts on his father, needed to yell at someone, might as well be the man who lost the girl in the first place. Don't you blame me for that boy. You had your hands on her, how could you not tell she was your mate, he snarled right back. I couldn't smell her he roared back whose fault is that. His bedroom door banged open and Cooper was standing staring at him, Brad, he questioned. Bradley sighed and pointed at his phone on the bed. Sorry Coop, it's fine his temper had brought his beta right to him, thinking something was likely wrong. Waved him away back to his room, saw as Cooper glanced at the phone's display, likely read his father's name, then stepped back out of the room and closed the door. Enough Bradley, were both likely at fault to some degree his father muttered. Bradley didn't really think that. His father should have found that little girl when she was ten, and when he had not found her should have confirmed with her mother's pack if she was there or not. Not just presumed she had gone there. Yes, a lot had been going on at the time. They were dealing with a massive rogue attack. Then his new baby had arrived the next day, just hours after the attack ended. Then there was clean-up after the attack and one little girl got lost in the process, and now she was a rogue and likely more human than wolf, from what he could tell. Had abandoned their ways. Deal with the movers, I'll try and talk Piper into calling off the police in the morning. It's late at night here like I said. And I'm not going banging on her door at this hour. Just deal with it please. Fine, you just bring that girl and my grandson. Back here ASAP the line clicked off. Bradley sighed, glared into the darkness of the room, might not be so easy, she was well ensconced into the human world. He'd seen no evidence at all that Piper Harper ran in any circles that were not human and he'd been looking into her a lot, trying to figure out the best way to handle her. From what he had read, she lived as a human worked as a human and had no interactions with her own kind at all. Not since she started her company, she lived and worked in Portland mostly, had opened her first store there, a year after she left the pack and had remained there. Only one pack close to her, the Pale Moon Pack, but they did not have any connection to her at all that he could find. She lived alone in the city and the Pale Moon Pack. 
they were out near the Tillamook State Forest. Well away from where she would have been and Bradley was certain Piper made a point of staying away from wolves. She'd been through enough pain due to him not knowing about their mate bond, so he doubted very much she would be willing to go near wolves again. She had voiced her rejection and would not be looking to find another mate that also could not scent her. In all likelihood, she would be actively avoiding finding one at all cost. She was likely to be more human now than Wolf he thought, saddened him more than a little. But she still had her Wolf, Harper. Though how much interaction or shifting she had done was unknown to him. It was nice that when she had changed her name, and built her company for herself, she had named it for herself and her Wolf. He really did like that, showed him how much she cared about her Wolf and counterpart that perhaps a part of her might still cling to her wolf inside. Put his phone back on charge and lay back down, prayed that tomorrow wouldn't be a nightmare, that between he and Eddie they could talk to her, keep her calm and get her to be open to the idea of coming back to the pack. At least now he did have some idea about her, and her lineage. Not all of it, but maybe enough. He was hoping enough to get her to come back with him talk to her family and try to sort this out. Bradley also had to know if their mate bond had actually been severed that day, or if it was still intact. He had no idea. Needed to figure that out first, she should know, would still be able to send him. If they were still bonded to each other, he was hoping so, might give him a better chance of her listening to him. Then there was the issue of if it was... Would she openly admit it? If not, he'd likely have to touch her, put his actual hands on her, she'd felt so hot to him, that he'd lost all control of himself. If that feeling was there still, he would be able to tell himself. Wondered how that would go, would he be able to handle it, and he was very curious what Benson was going to do about it. His wolf had been quiet now, for days was still annoyed because he couldn't sense his own pup. They knew the boy was theirs, not only did he have Bradley's unique eyes, the timeline fit, his age was right, they also knew she'd never been with another before him. Needed to stop thinking about it, needed to get some solid sleep so he would be calm, when he came across her tomorrow. Breakfast and then a plan to be made. Then they were going to find her knew she was somewhere in this very hotel. Unfortunately, Eddie couldn't send LZZY out either, so that was not helpful to him at all, likely going to have to have Cooper go and charm one of the female receptionists after breakfast. Eddie wouldn't do it at the moment, not with LZZY's past history. Eddie suspected her ex had cheated on her, Harry wouldn't do it, he had a mate and pups back in the pack. Bradley was not going to do it, had other concerns about that, so it was up to Cooper. The man likely wouldn't mind, as Hadley had stated, take one for the team, not that Cooper would have to go that far, most humans would find him insanely attractive and answer all his questions. LZZY, Izzy was at the store first thing in the morning, had called Paul and Devon, wanted to look around herself. They both met her at the store at 8 a.m. She was excited to be in the store, her own store, couldn't stop smiling actually. She loved the gold lettering on the front door, thought it was very pretty. All the stores had it, she'd actually chosen the lettering and color. It was her own personal touch on every one of Piper's stores. Smiled as she walked about in her own office space. Her desk had arrived and unlike Piper's very cold and impersonal glass and metal desk, she herself had opted for a modern curved white lacquered executive desk which had two movable white file storage set of drawers. Her chair was there too, a Napoli high-backed office chair also in white. She walked over and sank down at her desk. Loved that this was her office. Her glamorous velvet Chesterfield sofa, in dark grey had not yet arrived, but was going to look great, and be very comfortable to sit on, and not just for herself, 
but for the clients. There would also be a nice white wood coffee table coming as well. And a dark grey rug to go over the polished floorboards. Checked out the whole store, stood and talked to Devon, his office furniture was not in yet, due next week. He too seemed happy with the way things were progressing, ran through the inventory list of due arrivals, and let her know what was coming and when, emailed her a copy of it so she could be in store to help if she so chose to. Then he assured her he had it all under control. And it did seem that way. Then she headed off, and was about to get in her taxi back to the hotel when she heard her name called out. Looked up and across the street. Izzy. It was Edward, Mr. Yummy was here in person. Don't you get in that taxi? He called out to her, Izzy's heart was suddenly pounding inside her chest, as she stared at him. He had actually come all the way here, turned up like he said he would. He was wearing black jeans and a blue short-sleeved button-up shirt, it fitted him very well, showed off all those muscles she knew were under that shirt. Her eyes met his and she could see the smile in them. He knew she'd looked him over, checked him out. Izzy he called out as she started to get in the taxi. She had to get away from him. Even from across the street she was attracted to the man, Goddess only knew what would happen if he got his hands on her. Go. She told the driver quickly. There was a stream of traffic currently on the road. It was peak hour and it was the only thing stopping him from crossing the street and putting his hands on her. Something inside of her told her if he did she was going to be in even deeper trouble. Her taxi pulled out and she turned in her seat to see him watching her as the taxi drove away. His eyes never left her, bit her L, P and faced forward, got the feeling she was in real trouble. He was frowning at her, didn't seem to be mad but was watching her intently. Went directly to the hotel. He'd not followed, as far as she knew, stepped into the elevator and turned around to hit the sixth floor button, only to find Mr. Yummy coming through the front doors to the hotel, he was looking right at her. She hit the close door button repeatedly trying to make it hurry up and close as he walked over towards her. Izzy. He stated calmly just come here to me. She shook her head no at him. Why was it the man seemed to be able to render her speechless, watched the doors close and sagged against the wall and sighed with relief, then realized he'd only have to wait and see what floor it stopped on to know where she was. Pressed all the buttons from the fourth floor to the top, and then stood wondering where to get off, on her floor or before or after, and make her way via the stairs to try and avoid him, was chewing on her L. P worriedly, didn't want to lead that man to Piper, not with Brandon in the room. Got out on the fourth floor and headed for the end of the corridor where the sign stated exit, and was just pushing the door open to the stairwell when she heard a rather large growl coming from behind her. Turned around expecting to see someone with a dog and found Mr. Yummy at the other end of the corridor watching her don't run Izzy. He stated loudly kind of sounded a bit like a warning to her. She stepped into the stairwell as she watched him take a step towards her, then just banged the door shut and bolted up the stairs as fast as she could, nearly screamed in fright at the sound of the door banging open and closed behind her, like all of ten seconds later. What the hell, he moved so fast. Izzy was barely on the landing above him locked eyes with him and saw his mouth form into a smile oh Izzy. He grinned right up at her, she could swear his eyes were more green than she remembered, and then he was coming up the stairs after her slow deliberate steps, a soft growl issued from him and her heart rated shot through the roof, didn't actually know if it was fear or excitement, just turned and bolted up the next set of stairs away from him, what the hell was going on? She could hear him coming after her though deliberate steps it sounded kind of like he was stalking her on purpose. She was not the super fit, I gotta run every day like Piper. Izzy didn't even go to the gym, she was never going to be able to outrun him. 
managed to get two floors before she was huffing a little, she turned and looked back at him. He'd kept pace with her but not caught up and she knew he would be able to. He was very fit and likely worked out hours each day. Izzy was holding on to the handrail staring at him, he was staring right back at her still smiling, stop it. She gasped at him. Never. He told her and then moved so fast it was like a blur, he was on her pushing her up against the wall, his mouth was on hers, hungry and demanding, his hands were already tugging at the blouse she was wearing pulling it open, gasped as she was suddenly and roughly turned around his hands on her chest as she was pressed by his body against the wall, a deep soft growl rolled right out of him I missed you baby. He growled right into her ear. He was smiling down at her. His eyes were definitely way more brilliant green than normal, reached out a hand to touch her and she gasped and clutched at her shirt, pulling it closed. Saw him raise an eyebrow at her. Don't hide your body from me he demanded of her and pulled her hands away, then pushed them up over her head and pinned them there, using just one of his large hands to hold them there. I want to see you. He growled softly and she felt her legs press together as heat burned between them, that growl caused desire to build in her. What the hell was wrong with her? How could this man make her so desperate for his touch? Felt his free hand slide down her face gently, down her neck, do you want me LZZY? He growled softly. I'll show you LZZY, what you do to me. He murmured, no, I want you. He growled right into her ear, so very deep, mine. He growled possessively at her always mine. He stated till she was crying out his name, his mouth was on her ear. Never again LZZY, will you leave me? He told her gruffly. I will come out and punish you if you do. Izzy bit down on her bottom L, P and turned her eyes to him. Part of her was terrified by that statement, but another part of her was so very excited by it at the same time. If this was the punishment, she would run away again, she thought. His mouth found her soft and gentle as he slipped from her body, found his hand in her hair and he tugged her head back slightly. Found those brilliant green eyes right on hers say it LZZY. He growled deeply at her. She even knew what he wanted to hear. He'd asked her before, and she'd told him them, stared right up into those brilliant green eyes, that seemed to be glowing with desire for her and whispered I'm yours. Yes you are. He growled again and could feel more heat, got as she wanted to have him again and knew it. His mouth was on hers as he pulled her around to face him once more. Izzy wound her arms around his neck and kissed him back, she felt him pick her up Edward. She gasped, knowing he was going to have her again. Call me Timber he growled. Timber. She M0AND as she moved her body against his, didn't even care where they were anymore, didn't care about what fetish this was. Do you want timber, his voice was so deep, full of gravel and desire. Yes. She M0AND and she did want him. She loved it, wanted more, actually begged him for all of him, could hear him growling and snarling as he ravaged her body and it only turned her on even more, she clawed her nails into his arms, into his back and his neck anywhere she could get a hold of him, unable to control herself or her need for him. It was desperate, she was desperate for all of this man. Screamed Timber as he'd requested her call him as she peeked finally, her body pressed up against that wall, Izzy felt his arms slide around her as he stepped back and heard him sigh softly sorry about that. He murmured, slipping from her body. Think you can stand up for a second. Maybe LZZY answered honestly, didn't actually know if she could, felt her feet touch the ground, near slid down the wall, grabbed onto him, heard him chuckle softly, heard him zip his pants up and then he picked her up bridal style come on, let's get you into bed. I can't possibly, 
she murmured as she rested her head on his chest, there was no way she had the energy to do that again. You need sleep heard the smile in his voice. Izzy knew he was right, was utterly exhausted by this man, had no idea where he was taking her, just closed her eyes and allowed herself to settle into his arms, heard another voice state so much for staying in control. M.M., seems I can't help myself. It was Edward's voice, opened her eyes and found not just one person looking at her, but three. Bradley Drake himself was staring right at her, a deep frown on his face, she bit her lip. He wanted to know where Piper was and he was here in the same hotel she was betting. Eddie, you are in serious trouble she heard Bradley say as she was carried off away from them, placed down in a bed, she looked up at him worriedly. Sleep baby, you're perfectly safe in my bed. Edward leaned down and kissed her softly on the mouth before leaving the room. She yawned I'm definitely in trouble she muttered to herself and rolled over to curl herself around the pillow on the bed, allowing sleep to claim her. Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description, rest audiobook will be continued in next episode.